Chitta Fairlings here to tell you it's finally time to test the remaining single focus solution. The focus module, popularly known as the FM lens, was the first variable strength diopter released to solve the issue of double focusing with projection lenses. I've written enough articles on variable strength diopters, so I won't dwell on its workings. And the name focus module is also pretty straightforward about the product's goals. And the FM lens is actually the second anamorphic related product released by the anamorphic shop. Released in late 2014, the focus module was the first taste of single focus with beloved projection lenses such as the Koa BH, the Schneider Cinelux, and the Isco Blue Star or Ultra Star. I'll avoid as many comparisons as possible with the competing products, the Rectolux and the Rangefinder, since I'm also working on a video that is specially designed to compare it's a shootout with all three products. That being said, since the FM was the first of these products to be released, I believe uh, the consumers, the, the people buying it, were more tolerant with the product. Close to release, a gigantic thread grew on EOS HD with both love and hate for the FM lens. The FM lens is massive. It weighs 850 grams and it measures 15 centimeters from top to bottom when focused to infinity. When you focus it down to close focus, it grows another 2.7 centimeters. The focus goes from infinity down to 65 centimeters in just over 180 degrees of focus throw. The one that I got already came with a custom made focus gear, but that doesn't originally come with the product. It has a front filter thread of 105 millimeters and the rear thread is 72 millimeters with a custom step down ring for the Schneider Cinelux. Uh, that means that if, if using another anamorphic adapter, you won't have rear threads. In order to use the front threads, unscrew the front lip and install your 105mm filter backwards on it. The back clamp is also a lens collar with a slot for a 1 fourth of an inch screw as lens support. The entire front part of the lens rotates and moves with focusing, meaning it's kind of hard to use another lens support other than the one at the back. The rotation is also challenging for polarizers and variable NDs. This is a setup that requires rails. You can't just hang the FM onto the threads of your taking lens and go out to shoot. You need rails for this. In order to get it working, focus your anamorphic to infinity and place it inside the focus module. This is also the time when you align the lens and lock it into place internally. The FM can take multiple anamorphic adapters but it might need additional gear to fit them in place, like the FM Collar 24. Since the inner diameter of the tube is 71 millimeters, it also has to fit all in 89 millimeters in length, which is why the Schneider Cinelux is the ideal candidate with 71 millimeters diameter and 89 millimeters of length. Anamorphic Shop's YouTube channel has a video there of how to fit a Cinelux inside their lens. The product page also has a very straightforward tutorial that you can check out. My FM lens came with a Schneider Cinelux fitted inside, so to keep it all level with the previous single focus tests, I used the contact size primes as taking lenses and I swapped the Schneider for the Koa b &H. Fitting the Koa in there was a little bit tricky and it required some disassembly. The FM lens used to sell for 640 euro, which translates to roughly $700 without the anamorphic adapter inside, just for the single focus solution, the body. They ran out of stock a few months ago and it doesn't look like they have a plan to replenish that stock anytime soon, which makes the FM lens an item that you can only acquire through the used market. And unfortunately, there haven't been many sales, so I can't give you a price estimate. I've seen it range from 750 to to eleven hundred dollars, usually including the anamorphic lens inside. I must say I didn't expect it to be this sharp. I was able to get pretty decent results down to f 1.4, but the sharpest images come from f 2.8 and upwards. The large front element doesn't worry me since the FM is capable of very decent close focusing, dismissing the need for extra diopters. If you want to get the full resolution frames for these tests, they're available for download at the blog. As for flares, the image is clear and all you get is the anamorphic flares. 
For 2.4 to 1 shooting, you can go as wide as 50 millimeters, since the 40 mm pancake already introduces intense vignetting. As for 3.56 to 1, 85 millimeters is the way to go. Test ahead because vignetting creeps in as you focus closer. It's not a lot, but it's definitely some. The biggest challenge with shooting with the FM is its weight. Support at the back of the lens and by a single screw isn't a well thought out solution. It causes the lens to rotate ever so slightly if you're not careful when moving. I was able to jerry-rig mine with one fourth of an inch screws, nuts and spacers, but I heard of users building big rigs just to be able to work properly with it. The focus throw is also very long, which works with the thick focus gear that came with it, but wouldn't work with the normal gear. I've heard good things about Focus Maker to solve this issue, but it's not a standard follow focus. The results aren't unpleasing though. Single focus solutions have a spell that always blows me away when I use them. The FM is no exception to the rule. My confession is that support and weight sucks, but having the anamorphic always align and sliding it in and out as I swap taking lenses was more than a pleasant experience. The main issue in terms of performance is that you can get a bloom glow kind of thing when using fast apertures with the FM, like what you see in the low light tests. I am okay with that, I usually add that in post to most of my footage, but it's something that, as I just said, I'd rather add in post than have it in camera. One cool mod that came to be because of the FM lens is the chopped up version of it. In a style that resembles the Rectilux Core DNA and the SLR Magic's rangefinder, some people have cut up the back of the body and just kept the focusing optics and drilled holes so they can clamp that in front of the anamorphic. This was developed by Cosimo Murgolo and is also in play by Jesse Heidenfeld which allowed them to use much shorter anamorphics than 89mm such as the Koa b &H, and allowing them to go much wider than having the entire body. Needless to say, it makes the whole setup a lot lighter. Would you have the guts to do it? I know I wouldn't. Besides that, stay tuned for a shootout mixing all three single focus solutions, the rangefinder, the Rectilux, and the FM, as I might be the only person with all three at hand to do it. And subscribe to be notified when it comes up. And in the meantime, you should visit the blog to check countless other articles, reviews and tutorials. That's it for today. See you soon. Chit Fedens out.